prospective customer. So you know exactly what you are looking for. So it will help you in improving your marketing decision, such as maybe retargeting or developing of your content in a better form, or even in your sales process. These are benefits why you have to engage the customers. As part of what we are going to talk about or what we are talking about today, let, let's even look at the traditional customer engagement methods that we all know, that we used to do use before. Uh, I think we know some of them, advertising, radio, TV. I mean, we all know that customer engagement methods, it refers to strategies and techniques used by business to interact with, not only interact with, but retain customers before the widespread of our digital and online channels. So that is what we mean by traditional customer engagement methods. Uh, the, the, there are several, the in-person interaction, phone support, direct email, uh, loyalty programs, um, buy, buy one, get one free, customer service, the one that either you print out a long paper or you just say, give us a feedback, comment section, and all of that. You have one big box, subjection box, at the entrance and you just trade there and somebody will go through it and all of that. The print advertisement, either outdoor advertisement, advertisement or the uh, electronic medium. Trade shows and events. Those are how we engage our customers in the past. Word of mouth, of course, positive. However, you have to fuse this traditional method with the current method for it to be more effective these days. So, all of these traditional methods are still very relevant. Don't, don't I mean, it's, they are still very, very relevant in today's corporate communication and customer engagement, no doubt. But you know, the digital age has actually brought about our new customer engagement opportunities through the online platform, social media, email marketing, and e-commerce. That, of course, uh, cannot be overemphasized. Many companies we all know today combine the traditional digital approach to create a comprehensive customer's engagement strategy. Most Nigerian businesses, established businesses do that. We saw from Gus customer engagement what happened to Wema Bank by just one guy who said, put money in a particular account and boom, everything went away. So let's look at the modern customer engagement approaches. Of course, we all know that personalization, many channel, social media engagement, data-driven engagement. Now is the age of data. Everybody works with data. If you don't have data, you cannot succeed. I said before that I have, I work with people at the lower threshold of the economy, the very poor of the very poor. My customers are customers of microfinance banks. And these customers, they just borrow 80,000, 100,000 for a period of 90 days, and they try to pay back. The insurance premium is less than 1,000 naira. But they get to get free hospital treatment. If they die before they pay, because there are no collateral for those um, um, loans that they collect from those microfinance banks, the insurance step in and pay whatever balance is available. And that sheer number, is enough. But when they see us come to them to meet them in the market, to educate them, the need for them to go to the hospital, you need to see the joy and the closeness to us. And they try to even compare us with those online shark borrowers that they call banks that have no brink and mortar address. And say, you guys have a face and you connect with us. You feel our pain. You know what exactly is happening. So these are part of the modern day um, uh, customer engagement approaches that is being adopted today. If you are in business and you don't have an online presence, I'm sorry, you will not make it. It's not a bad prayer. Uh, you know, in Nigeria, we start a meeting with prayer, we end with prayers, but everything we say in the meeting is our lives and how they will steal the money. So, but this is not the case of prayer. This is a case of reality. You must, you have to be present in an online platform, either Instagram, Facebook, 
and all of the and connect with your customer, you will get the genuine feedback that you so desire. And that you will be shocked and amazed how those feedback will transform your business. So we want to take it one after the other so that we can look at it, how these modern approaches helps in this customer engagement. We'll start with the personalization. Uh, I mean, personalized marketing strategy, your customers should feel like the brand message is made just for them. Companies like Netflix, they do it, Amazon does it, YouTube does it. And um, I will tell another story. I've never liked Eric Air, an airpiece rather, because of their delays and all of that. But I had to be in worry about two weeks ago, so a couple of, yeah, few few weeks or last week or two weeks ago. And I had to go airpiece because I was the only aircraft going at that time. And I was shocked when the aircraft, I'm sure you must have seen it because, it, I mean, it went viral. And the pilot with the normal way they were engaged to say, Oh, around 30,000 feet, blah, 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 30 minutes to our destination. Weather is good. There'll be bumpy and all of that. And the guy just started by saying, I sabi fly. I know sabi blow grammar. This now captain, so, 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 so. And everybody were all engaged and we were excited. And for the first time, I looked at the cabin. I was sitting at the economy end. And everybody was just smiling. I was just listening, paying attention. People that were sleeping woke up to say, wait a minute. Are we, some were scared though, but for me, that was a direct communication with their customer. Maybe because of the city we were going to worry. I don't know if you had, if you probably would speak that way, if it was a flight to Abuja, I doubted it so much. So, the importance of personalization cannot be overemphasized. Customers are more likely to revisit their favorite hotels, cafes, saloon, if they feel they are being delivered a targeted and personal user experience. On that day, the experience with Airpiece for me changed a whole lot of things. And I can tell you that if I want to travel again, in fact, if I want to travel to worry, I'll definitely buy Airpiece. No doubt about that. So how about omni channel engagement? What do we mean? You have to engage your customers from different angles. You must put your customers at the center of everything. Then create, it creates a seamless cross-channel content. Disney World uses it. How do I mean? Do you know if you go to Disney World, as you book your tickets, they will give you either a tag or a wristband. That wristband or a tag will open your hotel room door. We get you access to anywhere you want to go in that Disney World. We take you anywhere. Everything is together. Some hotels do it. Even some airline does it. Where you will use the same miles to book your hotels. I know some of us know about that. And a couple of companies do that. It is something that it is really good. And these are ways and examples of omni channel experience that is being created. Uh, I decided to include EPIS because I think that is one new way that EPIS is trying to use to engage us. And I believe that hopefully uh, they will improve and all those bad ideas will go off. Social media engagement, what do we mean? I mean, the ultimate goal for Every business, I always say, is to ensure that there's increased sale. And through social media, you can achieve that. You might gather mentions of a brand or branded hashtag, then embed shopping Instagram galleries on your site. A lot of young entrepreneurs do this today. They will post something else on Instagram and direct you with hashtag to their page where you see galleries of what they are selling. Either it is Food, whether they're selling food, cakes, confessionaries, clothes, and all of that. You need to start to do that. And I'm aware that some banks do it. I think UBA does it. If you go to his website, there's something you click and it takes you to all their uh, uh, businesses and all of that. It's something that you need to engage in. Social media engagement is one of those modern uh, tools that we use for customers' engagement. It is very, very important. 
data-driven engagement is equally important. Of course, data-driven insight can significantly improve engagement strategies in various fields, including marketing, customer service, employee engagement, by leveraging data gain in a deeper understanding of your audience. You need to know the customer persona, what they want, how they like their things, and what they do. Some companies have used this strategy to get into new market environments. McDonald's has used it to extend to Far East, even where most of them there are vegetarians. So when you data is king, when you get data, you will work with it. From our own end, at a microfinance bank level, we use data a lot to engage our people. Even while in the bank, we're always using data to engage the people. And that is why somebody like Tony Enumelu, when he was operating Standard Trust Bank, he made sure that Standard Trust Bank had branches virtually where NYC orientation camps were. Why? He said, when these young men and women open account as youth coppers to have their businesses or to, uh, to collect their um, allowances, by the time they grow up and be in the employment level, it is just that bank they will still use. It's not the day you get 5 million that you look for an account to open. It's actually the day you get 5 million naira paycheck. You just want to go to your existing bank that you have been depositing 500 naira to put your money. So when you get data, it is important as part of customer's engagement. I want to divide a little bit. Let's look at, maybe if anything, anybody wants to stop me here, I don't mind. I, I can't look at the messages, but uh, let me see if I have any message up here. Okay, doctor, we have a message from Toka Jenny. Okay. Asking, can, can you explain what you mean by community building? Community building. Uh, in what sense? Because I, I don't understand from what perspective from is it the asked first, from the first is part the of engagement. Okay. Okay, community community building in terms of uh, element of customer engagement. Uh, you, you know, at times you can you you have uh, people that are either not necessarily loyal to your brand, but where you have, let me give a typical example of Henneken as a brand. Henneken as a brand, whether you like it, have certain communities. When there's football, there's Henneken. When there's football, there's a betting game. These are kind of the community we are talking about. You need to build some kind of community around your brand so that you can easily reach out to them in one block. Those are the kind of community we are talking about. You need to build such communities of loyalists. At the time, we had some kind of community for Coca-Cola down until they started unbundling them to various variants because they saw that everybody is not likely to like a particular flavor. So they decided to unbundle it. So community building has to do with brand engagement in terms of the society and all of that. So that is how it is part of the element of customer's engagement. That's what we're talking about. So a typical good example is the Henneken brand and how they engage the uh, community. Then, uh, of course, people like uh, MTN Foundation, they does it, they try to engage with the community in terms of creating a community of their own. Even when they had challenges with the government, they came out to say, hey, look, we are interested with the people. We love the Nigerian uh, community. And that is why we are here to stay. We are not going anywhere, even when they had those challenges. So it's all part of what we mean by community building. I hope that uh, satisfies your curiosity or question. If not, you will do further reading. That's what I tell my students. Anyway, any other question if I continue? Okay, someone is asking if you can drop the materials after the lecture. Absolutely, okay. I, 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 absolutely. But but um, they are just um, slides. But absolutely, I, I'll, I'll drop the material. And that's why I like to always want to use examples that we can feel and that we know about. 
I'm sorry, some of the things you, you'll be hearing me talk more outside the country because these are studies have been proven and have been established that it has worked in those developed areas. So based on the study that I carried out and my widespread reading, I, I'm not able to get certain Nigerian examples as, as it were to say, yes, this is what it is. But I know there are some that do exist, but you know how it is. Even when we get feedbacks, when we get for some kind of online engagement, I, I'll give you a small experience. I bought something from Amazon, uh, not Amazon, sorry, Jumia. Yeah, Jumia. I got something from Jumia. I think it was a rechargeable fan. And I tried to assemble it. It was delivered. I paid upon delivery. I tried to assemble it. And um, I now re realized that there was, no, there was one small knot, very tiny knot that was not in the package. Uh, I now had to, very tiny. I bought that knot that year, 20 naira. Meanwhile, I bought the fan for 18,000 naira. And that was like four or five years ago, before COVID. For me, I was not satisfied because as minute as that knot is, that means it's either there's no quality control or the packaging, somebody just misplaced that knot or something. But I know it was just the negligence either from packaging, but not from the manufacturer. So uh, at times when it comes to customer's engagement, it, it goes beyond the product offering. Guess you have to find a way of personalizing your message. And there are various tools that you have to use. So let's, let's go to building customer trust because trust is one thing that is so important in that customer's engagement and corporate communication, as it were. And that is why if you don't communicate, your customers will not know your intention, we do not know what where you are coming from. We don't even know your values and what you believe in, what your brand is trying to say. And it's not all about money. No, because you can have a good product. After a while, it fizzles out because newer and better ones will always come on board. But how come you will still be there existing? So trust is a fundamental element in building and maintaining strong customer engagement. It plays a very crucial role in every stage of customer's relationship, from the initial contact to the long-term loyalty. I told you a story at the beginning of how I decided to build trust with my customer by providing just one small service, very minute. If I tell you that period, Zenith Bank gave the man seven cows. Another bank, I think it was Equity Bank as at that time, gave the man two cows. I did not give cow. I just brought the marker to use. I just, I keyed him into what was necessary and what he needed. I personalized his own gift by offering very dedicated service. That was all I did. And that was the magic. So he knew, he felt that I was concerned about him. I treated him well. I was connected to him as at that time. And behold, we are still very, very good friends till tomorrow. Very, very good friends to tomorrow. Do I've, I've left the bank a long time ago. So, so what are these some reasons? Why are the reasons that you must trust that why trust is so important in customer engagement? Loyalty and retention. How can you build loyalty and retention if you don't have trust? It's not possible. So loyalty and retention, they all go together. So that's first of all the reason why you must build customer engagement because that loyalty will bring about repeated purchase, loyalty to your brand, more money, more sales, even they'll help you word of mouth to market your product, enhance reputation. I don't know, uh, certain airlines are known today, and maybe before, that no matter what, they are on time. But I heard from, I've read recently from blogs and some part of social media, that that brand, that part that we knew them for is fast eroding, which is Ebom Air. Maybe because they have now decided to go into international flights. Uh, I, I heard they now delay their flights. They don't move as at when, but for a long time, their word was their bond. When they said flight is 7 a.m. by 7 a.m., 
the plane is already on the tarmac moving. But I don't know if that's so you must enhance your reputation. What are you known for? You should be known for certain things. And that is how you build trust. Improved customer satisfaction. You must strive to improve customer satisfaction at all times. Please don't go because you can shut me down if there's any message or question on the chat uh, um, uh, um, uh, blog. So I, I have, I think there are three messages there. So you help me look at it and draw my attention to it. The open communication. You have to be open with your communication. MTN did it at the time. They came out to say no. We are not taking money out of the country. We are not shutting down. We are still here. And they're putting more money in the foundation in trying to help the sick, open hospitals, and all of that. You saw that there was now more engagement with their foundation to show empathy for the Nigerian people and the Nigerian community. So there must be open communication in why in part of trying to build that trust in customer engagement. Of course, risk reduction. When we say risk reduction, what do we mean? Uh, there are so many things that happen when you do, when, when you, you have, when you are engaged, when you focus on customer engagement. There are certain risks that are inherent, no doubt about it. Because while you are trying to set clear goals, you are trying to do this, some people will probably be against it. It can even, some technology will not encourage it. So you might you have to try and reduce that risk in that to build that trust. Of course, issue of trust, you must not, you have to dwell with data privacy and security. Some people are scared to put their bank details. And that is why in most Nigerian online store, stores or our fellow entrepreneurs that sell, those small, small people that sell on Instagram, Facebook, and all of that, they will say payment on delivery. Because they are scared that if they pay, they might not see the goods. Well, that 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 distrust is has to do with our country called Nigeria, uh, because we have too many smart guys. Uh, people now call you and say they are calling from the bank, and that you should send a particular number, or a group chat, and all that. So the issue of data privacy and security is very critical. So I mean, you have to. One of the reasons why you have to build trust was that. Then of course, competitive advantage. Um, you have to have that competitive edge against your competitors or your peers to be able to build that trust. Uh, when we say customer advocacy, actually, you were to you should be able to help me here. The customer will be the one speaking on your behalf to say yes, this brand, this person. Oh, Rome Business School is the best school. Oh, they take us to Italy. Oh, we did this, we did that. We go on tour to Kigali. We go here. Oh. But in National Open University, they don't do that. In University of Ibadan, they don't do that. In Lagos Business School, do they really do that? They used to. I don't know how far that is. Some of our students went to IIT Ibadan the other day for a Greek business. And for me, it was a clear eye opener. That was just, that is the distinction between Rome Business School and others. So these are ways you build trust in customer engagement. I'll just summarize. Trust is the foundation of successful customer engagement. It is not, not only drives customers' loyalty and satisfaction, but also positively impacts a company's reputation, competitive position, long-term viability. Businesses that patronize building and maintaining trust will likely see greater customers' retention, increased brand advocacy, and more favorable market position. I can tell you categorically, and that is what somebody like Tony Lumelu has brought to the UBA brand. He has brought that trust. That is why you see him constantly putting his lifestyle in front for people to see and say, this is the brand. For me, he's the, he's the, he's the best brand image maker for the bank, no other person. Because everything he does reflects it. He engages with the youth. He engages with anybody or who is anybody in the world. He engages to the lowest of the low and engages with the youth on a regular basis for people to see. And what is he doing? 
is actually getting himself involved in customer engagement. Okay, let me pause if there are any questions before we go into challenges and risks in, re in, re in rethinking customer engagement. Hey, Doc. Doc, there's no questions yet. I've asked that questions be dropped in the group chat. And uh, nothing on this group chat. Okay, this uh... are oh. entrance. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So that's fine. So I can go ahead. Can I go ahead? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So now let's look at the challenges and risks in rethinking customers' engagement. We have said it before, uh, customers' engagement can bring about several potential challenges, risks that organizations should be aware of and address. What are these? Some companies and some people are actually resistant to change. We all know that. It's not the kind of change that they promise us in this country I'm talking about, too, because that change never came, or it changed from to bad, from bad to worst. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I had one bad news today that Naira is now 1,130 Naira to a dollar. I don't know how far that is true, but I will investigate. And at the time, they said our dollar was moved from 150 to 320 Naira. That change must come. That's not the type of change I'm talking about. But however, when you think of customers' engagement and there are certain things you now want to change in your policies to, I mean, to reflect that customer engagement that you are advocating for, there will be resistance to change. So you need to watch that. There's also the challenge and risks of data privacy and security in customers' engagement because now you want to get the personas of customers, you want to check, know about their birthdays, you want to know number of children, you want to engage them personally. And there might be some kind of firewall as to the data privacy and security because every company cannot just be doing that and getting all the information from personal information of people. There might be some challenges there. Technology adoption. Uh, some people are very savvy in in change of technology. And we all know today how technology moves fast and fast. You wake up in the morning and the next thing, your laptop is outdated. There are certain features that have involved that you felt that you could not really do until you either you're upgrading and all of that. So technology adoption is part of the challenges and risks involving customers' um, engagement. Then again, Customers' expectations. As customers, do we really expect much from our brands? That is another area. Because if your customers' expectations are high up there, then there's a challenge if you're not able to meet them. So those are part of the risk factors in customers' engagement. So I will always advocate under promise and over deliver. Consistency and omni channel engagement. You know, some people will start off and say, oh, you can start a process from online transaction and continue. Or where it does not work, do you get a refund? Some airlines these days don't even pay a refund. Or it takes about six months for you to get a refund from an airline ticket you got and the flights didn't go. Some will say, use the, the amount for another route. I don't want to travel to Abuja. You canceled my flight to Wiri. Give me my money so that I can use it. No, we don't refund. Eric does that a lot. I heard that because they are under receivership and a few other and other arrangements, so they cannot refund money and all of that. I don't know. Then the issue of cultural alignment is another issue. You cannot say because you are trying to get involved in customer engagement, corporate communication, then you now decide to get all the internal details or personal details of an allergist wife in Kano. 
if you're not careful, you can be beheaded or the company will be dealt with. We saw what happened to a brand when they jokingly made a fuse out of Christians, um, the time we were doing um, uh, fasting and um, the death of Jesus Christ and all of that. I don't know if we, if we all remember that and what happened. And banks started lashing, everybody started lashing. They had to retract their statements and even apologize to their customers. So at times, cultural alignment can be a major risk factor in rethinking customer engagement. As at that time, that bank was planning that. They felt that they were communicating with their customer, but there's really only a certain percentage of their customer, not all of them. Then the issue of feedback management is important because it is how you deal with feedback mechanism that you'll be able to use it. Some don't know how to handle feedback. So feedback for me are two edged sword. It can may or mark you. So these are part of the risks and uh, engagement that we'll talk about. So let's look at how, what are the strategies for us mitigating these challenges and retaking customer engagement. We'll just take them so that at least we learn with typical example. We talked about customer research and data analysis. Some strategies do help mitigate these challenges. How? What are the challenges? Lack of understanding of customer needs and preference. What is the mitigant? Invest in customer's research, data analysis, to gain a deep understanding of your customer. Use this data to tailor your engagement strategies. You cannot say you want to engage with the youth or your brand or your product is youth-based. And you are not in, on Instagram, you are not on Facebook, you are not on any social media, you don't partake in all those their, uh, activities that youths are engaging. As we tell in Nigeria entertainment, it can work. That is what we are talking about. Those are the things we are talking about. We talk about change management. What is the challenge? Resistance to change within the organization. Some people don't want to change. I heard one state is going using paperless government. I think that's my state. And some permanent secretaries and some senior directors are going against it. They'll tell you they don't have laptop. They had to buy a laptop for all the directors. But they'll tell you that they don't have light at home. Some don't even know how to press the enter key. But you need to train and retrain. What are the mitigants? Implement effective change management strategies, include clear communication, employee training, and involving key stakeholders in the decision-making process. Again, technology adoption. The challenge is integrating new technology into an existing system. You want to now do something where you send out direct emails to everybody, where it used to be to whom you may concern. You now need to find an app or a technology that will take the names one by one and dispatch the emails immediately to 600 people. How do you do it? So to mitigate this, you just ensure you have a well thought out technology adoption plan. This may involve a gradual integration, vendor collaboration, and extensive testing to minimize disruption. These are ways you can mitigate such challenges. Strategies again for mitigating issues of data privacy and security, handling customers data res responsibly and securely. You need to invest in a robust data security measure, compliance with data protection regulations and transparent data handling practices. Build customer trust through transparent privacy policies. These are no cheap things to embark on. But for big corporations, big organizations, banks, blue chip companies, you should invest in this. You should invest in this. When we say competitive analysis, you are trying to compete effectively in a changing market like Nigeria today. You need to regularly monitor and analyze your competitor strategy and customer engagement tactics so that you can adopt your own strategies to stay competitive. Some banks are doing it. Some companies are currently doing it. We see the war between Dangote Cement 
and Boa Cement in trying to engage their customers. We see it, it happens. So these are part of mitigating challenging factors. The issue of resource allocation, limited resources for implementing new customer engagement strategies. How do you mitigate it? Prioritize initiatives. Allocate resources where they will have the most significant impact. If possible, consider outsourcing or partnership if the cost is effective. And that's what I tell some of the microfinance bank that we deal with. Don't worry, we'll take this off you. We will visit the customers on your behalf. So at times we get different brands, but the most important thing is engaging the customer on the field and to get them engaged is what for us, which is our goal, excuse me. Of course, employee training and development. Ensure employees are equipped to deliver on new engagement strategies. You have to invest in training, development programs to enhance employee skills and keep them updated to the latest practices. And that is what Room Business School is doing today. I'm on the spot, it's pro bono we know, but we just need to talk to our students and talk to our people so that they can be able to compete favorably with some of those lads that they say they've gone to Canada and America to school. Isn't it so? Is that not why we're here? So is that part of it? The issue of feedback loops, failing to gather the act on customer's feedback. Yes, yeah, some does it. How do we mitigate it? Establish feedback mechanisms that encourages customers to provide input. Ensure that this feedback is analyzed and improvements are made based on customer's input. Yes, you cannot satisfy everybody, but you can take a pool and say, do they really want this? Is it that they want it at this time? Or is it at that time? When? So you, know, you just have to look at it and come up with something better. Crisis preparedness. Unforeseen events that can destroy customer engagement efforts. We saw that with COVID. Didn't we? We saw that people couldn't engage with their customers. I can tell you the first institution that it was at the peak of that COVID, Babcock did not stop, destroy, it didn't destroy Babcock University's calendar when they are supposed to graduate. When they, they transformed immediately into online studies, installed cameras in virtually all the, uh, the lecturers' offices for them to deliver lectures seamlessly. And for the students, they provided internet for some of them where they don't have. So unforeseen events can destroy customers' engagement efforts. So develop crisis management plan to respond to unexpected events, ensure continuity in customers' engagement, even during the crisis for you to survive. So mitigating challenges and risks in rethinking customer engagement requires a combination of research, planning, adoption, and commitment to ongoing improvement. It is crucial to keep customer preference and market dynamics at the forefront of your strategy and remain agile in response to change. In conclusion, rethinking customer engagement is essential for modern businesses to remain competitive. Build brand loyalty, adopt to evolve customers' expectation by highlighting the power of data technology and customer-centric mindset. Companies, small businesses, big businesses can create more meaningful and personalized and efficient interaction with their customers, ultimately leading to greater success and sustainability in the long run. I will say thank you for your attention. I hope I've not overshot my time. And I will take questions and answer where I cannot answer them. Achebe will answer for me because she's a lawyer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. We appreciate this lecture and I know that we learned a lot. Okay, we have a few questions here. We have one from Emmanuel Arthur Atman. Emmanuel yeah. is asking, how do we deal with customer trust and retention when introducing a new product? Trust and retention when introducing a new product. First, which market are you going to? You must study your markets. You must know your customers. You see, you, must, you have to understand your customers in everything that you do. 
customer is king. You must kind of have what they call persona development skills. Yes, new products, that means you have an existing product before now. So you can leverage on it and use it to get customer's trust. Customer, if your product is good, you will have loyal customers and there's always room for improvement. But most importantly, you must know your market. So you cannot, you cannot bring, um, which product will I say now? Uh, bring, uh, I'm sorry, oh, let me use this one. You know, big cola and Coca-Cola. You cannot bring big cola to Ikoi to come and do a road show. But you can take big cola, cola to Jagamu and the road show will be successful. Isn't it so? If you, if you drive into Leki from the bridge from Ikoyi, you will see, as you descend the bridge, you will see into Leki, you will see the way Martel Cognac has organized and displayed a few things on that roundabout. And I told to myself, why didn't this Cognac go to Ojudu Bega bus stop and do this now? But how many people in that axis will have 40,000 uh, to buy a bottle of cognac that two people will just consume in a sitting. So again, location is key. So your new product has to be, what's your target segment? Which location are you launching? And how do you get to get what you require? I hope that answer your question uh, or you're satisfied with my response. If not, I would recommend further reading. Okay, thank you, sir. We have another question from Samuel Ade Kola. How can a customer trust be gained? Oof. Customer trust can be gained with various things. It's, it's about um, what you have been doing in the past. Uh, if you have consistently disappointed them, how do you gain the customer's trust? Uh, um, I'll tell you one small story. Let me answer your question one small story. Before I bought that airpiece, I had bought Aero and they canceled the flight. And I told my wife, I just got an email that money. Flight has been canceled because of operational reason. Uh, we are sorry, no flight at all. And the first thing I my wife told me, why did you go and buy Aero? Aero doesn't exist anymore. Now, Aero is full of disappointment. I said, but they were the cheapest. And I, I bought Aero ticket purely because of cost, nothing else. But you see, trust has been eroded over time. So why trust them? So the little things that you do is what build up trust. So start to do those little things so that trust will come. That would be my response. Thank you. Okay, Sarah so we have a question from Nsikak, John. How, okay. can, how can macroeconomics indices and on the other hand, business objectives slash policies affect customer satisfaction and retention? Your question again, please. How can macroeconomics? Yes. How can macroeconomics indices, and on the other hand, business objectives slash policies affect customer satisfaction and retention? Your business objective, first of all, must align with the current macroeconomics indices because you'll be running the other way around. It can't work. The environment you are you must study the micro indices, microeconomic indices for you to align your business to flow along that direction. So that you, because you're in business to make money. You're not a charity of organization. If it's charity, Red Cross, Red Cross will always go to where there's war. When they are calling for investors to come into this country, what are the microeconomic indices? I will bring my dollar to come here, do business in Naira. In no time, my money will wither away. 
So they, they go together. You must align with the microeconomic indices with your business objective to be able to achieve the goal. If you decide to go off it, there will be a problem in front. And that is the common simple truth. Again, it depends on the industry that you're operating from. So certain industries have certain, it depends if it's service, if it's production, it depends again on what you are looking at. But there's no way that the current microeconomic indices will not be a factor in determining your business objective. It cannot be isolated. And of course, in line with whatever you are doing. Okay, kindly sign in attendance. Please sign in attendance, I can see it. Um, so that um, we get the data and information that are required at, uh, by didactic. I hope that answers your question. If not, actually we throw more light on it. <laughs> We have another question, sir. Um, how do you deal with an overbearing customer who has interest in another product? Ah. How do you deal with an overbearing customer that have interest in another product? It's a two-way question. How do you deal with a nagging wife that is flirting with another man. Is that not the same question? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see, you have to. It's competition. There's no, you can't, you don't have monopoly of any product. Even gone are the days. We can see when the liberalization of telecommunication came into the country. The people that had the largest widespread base, Nitel, could not even manage one small cell site. So it is not a function of, it is a function of your own products, your own engagement, your own dealings. It's not about the competition because there will always be competitors. Rome business will have competitors. We are fighting for the same students. It is at a, for our own delivery, service offering, value for money, time, engagement, sincerity, transparency, good thinking, good product. Toyota, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. So basically we are talking about incentives that helps guide to us that I believe more incentives can help, you know, yeah. rechannel uh, uh, such a customer to you. Just like business school, like you said, uh, the tours and all that, creating more opportunities for students to get engaged. Of course, of course, of course, giving them real value for their money. It is not like a wrong business school, if you notice, we don't just teach you to pass exams. No, we teach you to face the world challenges. We teach you to become a leader in the wider society because you are a born leader. You cannot come to your own business school and live the same. So we expose you to a whole lot of business challenges from your capstone project to your normal lecture um, um, content and um, uh, curriculum to see that you are a complete manager in the real sense of the business world. So that when you go out there and you say you are from Rome Business School, your alumnus are Rome Business School, they'll say, yes, they have good stuff there. That is why I tell my students, I, I hardly come to class and to teach you the definition of brand loyalty or how it's brandified. You will never see that in my question. If this was a normal class work, where you will have score, you probably will see class quiz, case studies, and all of that. You know, that is how, so that it will stick in. 
and your own idea can come to play. Who told you that we lecturers, we know everything? At times we learn from you, the students, your current. Maybe you don't know, today, before I, I, I came on air to deliver this class, I had asked one of you for help on how to operate my system. I didn't know. I, I can't show of not knowing, but now I know because I asked earlier in the day. So tomorrow I will not ask. That's the difference. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. We have we have several questions. Uh, I think we'll just take three because we are really running out of time. And then any further questions, um, I'm sure. Can I send my email? Can I send my email so that yes, we can sir. continue the engagement from here? Yes, sir. Yes, actually uh, one of the questions I have, mind. they're asking if you can drop your details so that they can forward more questions. Um, okay, so what I will do, I will send to everybody. What happened here? Something is wrong, you see? My icon is saying that I should, okay, anyway, uh, Chuka Maka, what my icon is saying, I, should, I can only send to you, so you help me distribute it to everybody. Okay, sir. Okay, I've sent my email to uh, Chukwa, Chukwa Maka. Uh, so she will now distribute to all of you. Okay. Maka means God is good. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Good. Good. All right. Can we take one more question and then we we'll wrap we we'll wrap it up? Okay. All right. In um, Emmanuel Aban is also is asking again in the recent economic situation where the customer is reducing his quantity purchase. How do we manage customer engagement to increase sales? I'll give a small story by answering that question. How? I don't know how many of you know Colgate. Colgate toothpaste. Colgate toothpaste used to, the factory is a company in America and um, a guy used to work as um, a, a steward to one of the executive vice presidents in the company. And the guy was in charge of strategy and marketing. His steward, he now came home and was, he couldn't eat and was just perplexed about how he can improve sales. He said sales were dwindling, they were not buying, even people that bought were not coming back to buy. And his steward said, sir, you know, you give me your toothpaste in bulk just to take and use. And when I use them, my other neighbors in my neighborhood buy toothpaste, but I realize that their own finishes on time and they go buy another one. But my own that I'm, I'm having, I'm using it for a long time. Now, is there a way they can do the toothpaste so that when they press it, it can come out more? So that does give the man a brainwave. All they needed to do was to increase the size of that opening. That is why you see Colgate, that the amount used to be very big. So you press, it finishes, so you get. So in no time, repeated purchase increased because it finishes on time and it comes back to buy. And that was the, that's the model Chinese company used. Their product don't last. You must come back to buy. So customers are not buying now because of the social crisis in the country. Are you not aware? Recently, I used to use, uh, what was this so called again? Um, yeah, I think I used to use, yeah. I don't know if you can see my screen. You can see it. I used to yeah. use the toy soap. I, buy, I used to buy this soap for 750, maximum 800. But I used to buy a roll, so at times I don't know the unit cost. And I went there and I said, how much? They said, it's 1,000 for one. I wanted to buy six. I changed it to three because I have other things to buy. It is the social pressure currently. So what you need to do is to find multiple channels of selling 
so that you can sell more to more people. Use economics of scale. When um, this product came on board, too sure. You remember too sure during the crisis. Too sure hand sanitizer. Too sure hand sanitizer had the general acceptance in the market, but it was being produced by the same company that produces Pepsi Cola. People didn't know that on time. Meanwhile, we had pharmaceutical companies. We had what was their strategy? Marketing, availability, price, packaging. They had different sizes. They had smaller sizes for individual use. They have massive sizes for corporate use. They have massive sizes for industrial use. And they, have, and they were all over the place. They used their vehicle, Pepsi Cola delivery van, because they could move around because it's food as at that time to market their products. So the only com, uh, pro, um, vans you were seeing on the road were basically food vans. So when you see it, you see too short. And it was available. We were, there were other similar products in the market. People didn't get it. So my brother, you want more people to buy your product, get it more out there for people to see. At times, availability is actually the key. Once it's available, people will buy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. Uh, we really appreciate this. This was really insightful and very educating. We acknowledge your time and efforts, and uh, we hope that we'll be back to throw more light on, on this topic. Uh, like I said, everyone, please redirect your questions to the to Dr. Sam's email that I posted in the group chat. So, Dr. Sam, please, any any words of encouragement for us? Uh, okay. Honestly, this is not the best time to be a young man or a young woman in this country, I must confess. I have young adults uh, that are, one just graduated, but she had to go back to school because there was no job. So, and um, the other one is still struggling to finish. The truth of the matter is that you guys have to be resilient. There's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel. By the time things settles, it is knowledge that will set you apart. Do not complain. Rather, look at the cup as half full rather than half empty. Now the country is giving you lemon. Please prepare lemonade. Some people are making money from Instagram posts, TikTok posts. I know some of you will know about the very dark man that they call poor and dirty. You can see how the guy is rising to fame gradually. So do not give up as a young man or young woman. Just continue to do what you know how to do best. Above all, knowledge is key. Keep reading whatever you can lay your hands on to read. Develop new skills. De develop, some people call it side hustle. Something you like doing, just be doing it. You will be shocked and amazed how it will turn out to be. I've asked my daughter, to start learning how to sew during her spare time in America, how to just make clothes, just sew. Because you never can tell. You never can tell. After all, Faust the bad guy is a lawyer. And during the NBA conference that was held recently, they refused to call Faust the bad guy, who is a lawyer and a musician and entertainer. And they went to call. <laughs> Who answered that question? <laughs> Arrest my kids. <laughs> Thank you very much. And God Thank bless you. all of you. Eh? You will succeed in Jesus' name. Eh? Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Um, right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this session. Please, uh, right now, I will introduce, uh, I will call on Christopher Lawal to talk to us on our programs. Hello, Christopher. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Amaka, for the wonderful moderation. And, um, 
Thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for the insights uh, into corporate communications. Uh, good afternoon, uh, once again, uh, our dear executive students, and um, thank you for participating in this webinar. Okay, so uh, I've learned a lot in the webinar and um, very insightful. Uh, this is one of the things we do at Room Business School to equip uh, our students with industry knowledge on different areas uh, to keep abreast with the opponents. Okay, and um, our master's program uh, cutting across various uh, sector of business, you know, is also enriched with uh, knowledge and um, to keep our students, you know, top of their career and of course uh, in their businesses. Okay, so uh, right now uh, we're closing the October 2023 intake. Okay, so we just have a few days left, okay, between now and um, Tuesday to close the October 2023 intake. Okay, so if you are yet to come on board for the uh, any of our programs, then the best time is now, okay. Uh, it's easy to procrastinate, it's easy to uh, push forward, you know, you wanting to do a master, but the truth of the matter is there's never a good time to start a master's program, okay? The world is being convenient. It's just for you to make those sacrifices. And um, within one year, you'll be glad you did. Okay, so uh, like I said, we're closing in and um, it should be a best time to come. Uh, we've also taken into consideration uh, the fact that we're dealing with busy executive. And that is why we made the classes very flexible uh, which is two weekends every month. And um, so you also have time to attend to other uh, family issues and also have time to rest, you know. So we're not taking all of your weekends uh, within the one year. So two weekends uh, every month. And um, we also have uh, the career service to also give you more values in respect to uh, your career projection and also uh, your business, okay? So there are also opportunities for international experience. Okay, so at the end of the day, the idea is to equip you to become a global business leader and um, to be ready to take on the challenges of the 21st century business place, okay? So this uh, webinar marks the, the last webinar for the Business Leadership Development Program uh, for the October 2023 intake. Okay, so it's been an exciting journey uh, so far. And for those that have been participating, uh, we appreciate you. And of course, I believe uh, you've been gaining and um, adding value to yourself, uh, which is also reflective in discharge of your functions and of course, uh, your business. Okay, so we look forward to a wonderful learning experience, especially for the October 2023 intake as we kick starts. Uh, with induction this Saturday, uh, not this Saturday, next week, Saturday, 28th of October. Okay, so like I said, if you're yet to come on board, you can revert back to your advisor and um, engage on how to get started. Okay, because if you want to go further, if you want to go faster, uh, then you need a master and um, not just any master, a master from a business school and not just any business school, our own business school. Okay, so thank you all uh, for taking our time and um, we look forward to having those that are yet to come on board uh, for the program to get started with the October 2023 intake. Thank you for the audience. Thank you, Christopher. Okay, I'll call on Sarah to give us the final closing remarks. All right, thank you very much. I think as our speaker has left. Okay, it was a delight to have you here with us today. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, Christopher. Um, I can see that some people are still complaining about tenders. Please, if you're yet to sign, um, sign out and log back in. Um, you should be able to see the attendance. And also, I can see some people logging in with their phone device, their model, 
Um, I can see iPhone 6, I can see Blue, I can see Nani's phone. Please log out and log back in with your full name so we can capture um, the attendance accordingly. Thank you all so much. Um, do well to share what you've learned um, in this section. You can share it on LinkedIn, you can share it on uh, Facebook. Do well to also tag us. Um, where, when you share, we want to know what resonates with you, we want to know what you've learned, and we want to uh, be able to share with you as well. So thank you all so much. Um, there's nothing else from me, from all of us at Kairos this Department. We say have a wonderful weekend. And also, um, the registration for the best fair is currently on. Please, if you're yet to register, please um, fill the registration form and register. Participation is free. And for those who have business ideas, who have who have completed their capstone project and would like to pitch their businesses to NGOs and investors, this is your opportunity. We're going to reshare the registration form for you. Do well to fill that so we can have your details and send you communications as well. Thank you all so much. My name is Sarah and it's bye from me.